uh, through what it was like reviewing the BYU uh, film, what your takeaways from work from there, and how you guys are working on uh, that this week? Uh, tough to watch, you know what I mean? Really felt like you let one get away um, as a team, you know. Um, we take pride in and, and have taken pride in, in playing well at home. Um, and, and so to, to be in that type of a game um, in front of our home crowd and our, our uh, atmosphere, you know, we, we wanted to do what we needed to do to come out with the, with the win. And um, we just couldn't get it done, you know. Um, Everybody wants to say that we played well defensively and, and did some good things. And, um, you know, we agree that there's some things that we did well, but there's also other ways that we could have capitalized. You know what I mean? We needed one more stop to put us in position for that game to go. Otherwise, um, we score on any one of the takeaways. You know, we, we had opportunities in, in both settings to, to put both of those balls in the end zone. And so, um, you know, our, our goal and our thought process is we're going to do whatever we need to do to be the best defense that we can, but we want to be the best team overall. Um, you know, you don't, it's not a moral victory because you play well defensively, you know, um, you lost the game. And at the end of the day, there are going to be times where we need to play well for us to win. And there are going to be times where our offense needs to be able to play well. And obviously we want to be able to do that consistently on both sides. Um, but, you know, you want to be able to pick up the slack for each other. And so, you know, for us, um, you had to get over it, you gave yourself some time, gave our guys some time to make sure that we processed through it, saw how we could have capitalized and done things better um, in all phases of the game. And then you got to start looking towards the next one, right? And, you know, the tough part about this week is it's a bye week. So you don't really get to get back into it as far as from a game standpoint until two weeks. Um, but, you know, the preparation and, and the time that you have from a practice standpoint, um, it's being better in open field tackling, it's being better in situational awareness, it's being better in, in um, you know, phases that are going to help us not only move forward past last game, but for the rest of the season. What does uh, TCU look like on film? I know you'll have another game's work to review after this weekend, but what are your kind of early impressions of what they can do on offense? You know, I think that um, they're, they're as good as they've been in the past two years that we've played them. Um, you know, I think the quarterback, the, the Hooper kid from uh, Rockwall Heath is, uh, is a player. I mean, He's very accurate. He's very poised for a sophomore, you know, playing in what will be like his 10th or 11th game, um, you know, in college. And, and so being able to see that uh, anytime that, that you got a guy back there that can spin it and they can put it in, in, in tight windows like he does, you know, you got to be on high alert for it. I think they're skilled on the outside. Uh, obviously, Savion Williams is the lead of that group. Um, but the vet kid, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, you know, skill. We went back and watched his film from uh, when he was at LSU and some of the things that he's able to do with, with not only catching the ball, but the run after the catch. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a full effort and, and it'll take our best, you know, which is what you want in a game like this, right? The rivalry game and, you know, them having to come here and all of the things that come into that. You know, you want a team that's going to be a uh, formidable opponent and you got to go take it and win it. And so um, when you watch them, um, they're athletic, they get the ball in space, uh, they do a really good job of, of capitalizing off of tempo and what that looks like. And so we got to be prepared for that going into next week. As far as Kevin goes, how what what problems does he present as a, as a quarterback from what you guys have seen from him in practice? Anytime you got a guy that can move around, which both of our guys can, um, you know, that's always something you got to prepare for. You know, uh, you, you go into a game and you say, okay, how can a kid beat you with his arm? or with what the scheme of the offense is. But then if he can use his legs as well, that's an added layer. And so, uh, you know, Kev definitely brings that to the table. Uh, you know, Preston does as well. But, you know, I think that the big thing is offense is having to uh, prepare for, you know, the quote unquote dual threat. But, you know, with what we do and, and how we move as an offense as well, uh, I think that plays to some of our offensive strengths uh, you know, tempo-wise and, and um, you know, being able to create um, some situations that are going to be and allow us to, to take advantage of, of how explosive and who we uh, have been and can be offensively. What do you think about the physicality, first time playing a power conference school this year, uh, just how you felt that they, they were able to be uh, aggressive in that game? Tell me, BYU? How your defense was able to go up against the FA. Yeah. Um, 
I think we were ready. Uh, I don't know we'll be ready for the rest of the year. You know, we take pride in, in, in being able to be a physical unit. Um, you know, if anybody watched that game and, and watches us, you know, hopefully that's what they see on film is that, you know, we're going to push the tempo from a physicality standpoint. Um, you know, we don't plan on allowing anybody to come in and bully us around. Um, but, but it starts with the mindset, with the way that we uh, are kind of wired from a defensive standpoint. I think our guys showed that, you know, um, third and short stops, fourth down stops. Um, you know, we pride ourselves in being in that situation and saying we get to go take it from you um, as opposed to, you know, you getting off the field uh, or you converting. And so, you know, 2 of 13 on third down, you know, um, we felt really good about um, not great about the two or four on, or two or three on third on fourth down, uh, which we knew that they were going to be a team that was going to try to go for fourth downs if they were manageable. Um, but you know, I think we're ready, and, and you know, we'll continue to answer any questions that anybody got about physicality. What have you seen from your group? They were kind of a question mark replacing both starters, but what have you seen from them through three games so far? Uh, I think we have done a really good job, or I shouldn't say really good job, but we've done a good job so far of doing our job. Um, you know, we, we had the explosive in Nevada. There was a, a communication bust, um, and, and we have to be better in that regard. Um, we, we've been loose with our eyes at times, um, which is, is something that, you know, we're never pleased with and I'm not pleased with. But uh, as far as people trying to, if they were coming into that game saying that this is a mismatch or this is the, the matchup that we feel is favorable, um, I think we've done a pretty good job of, of saying you better be good, you know, uh, if, if you're going to take advantage of that. And so we're just looking forward to the challenge every week. You know, we, like I said to you guys in the spring, like I said before the season started, uh, we kind of took that question mark as not so much, you know, you can get all worked up and say, you know, underdog or we got to prove this. It don't have nothing to do with any of that. It's just a matter of are you the question mark or are you not? And if you're not, then you need to prove it. If you are, um, then we need to fix it. And, and so right now, um, our goal is to continue to prove it and make sure that we're a strength of our defense and our team, um, not just a, a, a guy standing out there taking reps. Did you kind of like the rotation you're at right now, or would you like maybe one guy on, on both sides to kind of step up and maybe take the line share of it, or how do you kind of see that playing out? That's a great question. Um, you know, traditionally I've been a two to three guy uh, on, on game day type of deal. And, and, you know, last year you get in a situation where you got two guys that can take every single rep. And this year, two things. I, I think our guys have done a really good job of putting themselves on special teams as well. Um, you know, Smoke is on, you know, two special teams. Uh, I think Brandon is on two or three of our special teams uh, right now. And they're, if not, they're in that depth. And so that's why it's important to have depth. You know, and feel comfortable that Deuce can go out and take reps, that AJ can go out and take reps. You know, we, we end up in a position where uh, Jahar was in there late in the game on, on Saturday, and the expectation is there's no drop off. You know what I mean? It took two shots at you. One, I would look like him being in a better position than he was, but he played his tail off and finished the play. And then the second, second one is textbook. So um, if, if a game calls for us to be in that rotation, I would say, you know, we're not afraid to do that. but. You know, we, we feel confident and comfortable, especially as, as um, ability level in the teams uh, increase that we're going to play moving forward, that we want to have, you know, some guys that kind of separate that we can just, you know, be that shutdown guy or, or shut down guys. Um, but if it takes all of us, it takes all of us. And we'll keep swinging with everybody if we need to. You kind of mentioned the fact that you're not going to get to play a game this weekend and kind of watch the team second half of the last game. How do you make sure you keep the players, you know, focused on next game and not trying to look back to what just happened? Well, we, we got a 24-hour rule. Um, if you if you can't flush it in 24 hours, then, then we got to help you. Um, and so that's us as coaches as well, which is always tough. Um, and like I said, even tougher when you don't have a game that you're preparing for. But I think when it's a game of the magnitude that uh, we're going to play next week, I think it makes it easy, you know, to transition and focus. We were 0-2 against TCU as a staff since we've been here. Um, so it's exciting for us. You know, people can downplay, upplay all of this different crap or stuff about the game, about either how big or not big it is. It's big because it's the next one, but it's big for us because it's at home and, and we haven't beat them um, in, in a two-year span. So um, 
turning the page and getting focused on that is easy or easier. Um, you just got to do a good job of how do we need to prepare, right? Like you said, we got another game that we'll get and, and we'll see them play live, um, you know, on Saturday. You know, our guys will be watching it. Some of them watching it together. You know, some of them you know, will watch it individually. But that gives you a different perspective as opposed to watching it, uh, you know, from a past tense, I think. You know, you kind of get to see some things that we're working on. You know, do we feel good about that? Or, Coach, man, I saw this. You know, would we able to execute or, or uh, vice versa? And so um, there's some good and bad to it. But, but we look forward to being able to get ready for next week.